All right, what's up, everyone? I'm Faloki, and today I want to talk a little bit about the Seahawks secondary as a whole and kind of what it means for their defense going into the future. Before that, though, I just want to say thank you for all the support. Thank you to everyone, all the new subscribers, all the people that are commenting, all the people that are liking videos. It seems like I say this every video now, but just the support gets more and more every single time I post a video. It's crazy. In the last week, I've gained 63 subscribers, which is insane because um, like the whole first month that I started making videos, I only gained like 20 subscribers. And then in this last week, I've gained 60. It's just crazy to see. All the support is amazing, and I cannot thank you guys enough. But on to the topic at hand, the Seahawks secondary is a very interesting thing when it comes to how it is perceived and how the actual talent stacks up. When you look at the Seahawks secondary, it actually looks really good on paper. Shaquille Griffin, who is a pro bowler. You have Quentin Dunbar, who is definitely a good player who can come in and be a secondary cornerback. You have Quandre Diggs, who the Seahawks ended up trading for last season, who is a very good safety. You have Trey Flowers, who's had some big question marks when it comes to how he's been playing, but he's a young option that the Seahawks can definitely grow. And you have Ugo Amadi, who was a rookie last year that didn't get to see much playing time, but the front office and the coaches want to see him play more this season. And then you have Bradley McDougal, who is their current strong safety option, I believe, who um, is probably the biggest question mark on the team. And along with the secondary, you have the pass rush, which directly affects the secondary because if the defensive line and the linebackers can't get to the quarterback, the quarterback will have all day to make a pass and Frankly, anyone in the secondary cannot cover a receiver for more than like four or five seconds. Really, you got to make the quarterback throw the ball quick and you got to allow the cornerbacks to remain on their man in the initial part. Because once he gets to the kind of point where all the right receivers start running around trying to get themselves open, it's very difficult for a cornerback to stay on him. With all that said, I do think that the Seahawks secondary does look like it is the strength of the defense currently. After the Legion of Boom ended up uh, basically splitting apart, it's kind of been very questionable for our defense how the Seahawks will fare um, because the offense has always remained pretty good. We've had Tyler Lockett. We've had good running backs. We've had Russell Wilson. Pretty bad offensive line. Maybe they'll be better this season. One can only hope. But when you look at the defense of the Seahawks, ever since the Legion of Boom ended, it's been very questionable on every aspect. The secondary has been a bit questionable. Um, the pass rush hasn't been great too many years. The only consistent part of the defense has been Bobby Wagner. But right now, I believe the secondary is definitely the strength of our defense. Going and looking at it one by one, you really have to start with Quentin Dunbar. Because if he's able to play, he can definitely make a big impact on the Seahawks. Secondary definitely help as a cornerback and as a secondary option to Shaquille Griffin. But really, the main question is, will he be able to play? Will the NFL suspend him? He got off of his charges. He posted bail. But it's really about the NFL. And if they decide that they want someone who had such egregious charges against him, it really is a question about what the NFL will do. And if you go and look at Shaquille Griffin, he was a pro bowler last year. He's definitely began to prove himself as the top corner on the Seahawks. And the way that he talks, saying that all he wants to do is get better, he's not satisfied with just a pro bowl appearance. He wants to be one of the best cornerbacks in the league. It's great to see someone with that kind of mindset, someone who is willing to put in the work to try to be the best at their position. And I think that Shaquille Griffin will end up being a very good cornerback. And I believe he will definitely be the cornerstone piece of this defense once Bobby Wagner eventually ends up retiring, I think that it will be Shaquille Griffin that will be the main man on the defense. And then there's Quandre Diggs. Quandre Diggs, I mean, it was a robbery of a trade. We got a great safety for almost nothing, really. And he made some pretty big plays last year. He was definitely a big help when it came to our secondary. In only five games, he had three interceptions, a pick six, and he forced a fumble. And I honestly think that he was one of the biggest pieces when it came to uh, actually helping our secondary in the latter part of the season. And then you go and look at Trey Flowers. Trey Flowers is definitely a weird situation. He's, he's a young option at corner that they definitely can grow. He has room to improve. Flowers was converted from safety to corner immediately after he was drafted two years ago. And for not really playing corner in college, he actually grew pretty quickly. He had a pretty questionable first season, but last season he had three interceptions. And he honestly played pretty close to the standard that Shaquille Griffin played at. And if he can continue to progress, I think that there is a chance that he can be maybe a cornerback three or even a cornerback two if Quentin Dunbar isn't a long-term option for the Seahawks. And then there's Ugo Amadi. Ugo Amadi probably isn't a big name when it comes to people thinking about the Seahawks secondary, but that's because he really didn't see the field last year. As a rookie, he definitely had the potential to be a good nickel corner, and even John Schneider himself said that he wants to see Ugo Amadi play more at nickel corner next season because he did not play a lot in his rookie year, 
and that could definitely hurt his potential to grow. And like Trey Flowers, he's a young player that could potentially grow into Seattle's scheme and become a consistent starter later down the line. And I think with Shaquille Griffin, Trey Flowers, and Ugo Amadi being as young as they are, if they all can continue to progress and end up being the options for the Seahawks at cornerback, I wouldn't be too upset because they all seem like they have relative potential to be able to grow into a starter and maybe even help the Seahawks for years to come. And then we get to Bradley McDougal. Bradley McDougal really is the main question mark in the secondary. He didn't play too well last season. Uh, when Diggs came from the trade, he actually began to be more consistent as a complementary role to everyone else. He does have a big contract, a pretty expensive contract, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Seahawks gave Marquise Blair a chance to take his safety spot because he is another young option, and if the Seahawks wanted to have a very young secondary that they can continue to grow, I think that uh, Marquise Blair would have to be their main option. He's much cheaper than Bradley McDougal, and obviously Bradley McDougal being 29 years old and Marquise Blair being 22, Marquise Blair definitely has more room to grow because... Bradley McDougal is kind of at the end of his career, kind of at the later stages, in the regression stages. And Marquise Blair, he's 22. The only way he can go is up. He can progress and get better. I mean, he can stay the same, but I'd hope that someone 22 can end up progressing and being a big help for the Seahawks because he was a pretty early second round pick. And one quick mention that I wanted to make before I go into the biggest problem that I think haunts the secondary is uh, Tedrick Thompson. He's no longer on the team anymore, but I just wanted to mention um, he had maybe the greatest interception I've seen in a long time. And uh, it's sad that he's no longer with the Seahawks, but it made sense for them to cut him. They saved over $2 million, and he didn't really play too much. He was definitely a backup role, but... Just wanted to mention Tedrick Thompson, one of the greatest interceptions I've ever seen. But getting into the final topic of this video, I wanted to talk about the pass rush. Because when you think about the secondary, you always think about the cornerbacks, you think about the safeties, you, you think about how they play. But you really don't think about how much the pass rush actually affects the secondary. I mean, it's kind of obvious that if the quarterback does not have any pressure on him, he'll have all the time in the world he needs in the pocket. And it's really hard for defenders to cover wide receivers that are just roaming around and going wherever they think they need to to try to help their quarterback. Because as a cornerback, you can probably predict someone's route or a relative route that they may run based on their mannerisms, based on how they move. But when it comes down to the whole scramble to try to get open and help your quarterback as a wide receiver, it's almost impossible for a cornerback to guess what that wide receiver is going to do. It's really just a matter of hoping for the best that the quarterback will either throw it away or get sacked because I'd assume it's very difficult to cover someone who doesn't even know where they're going. They're just trying to do what they can to get open. I think everyone knows that the Seahawks pass rush is maybe the biggest problem on their defense. And when it comes down to it, there is the chance of getting Jadavion Clowney back. Um, there were some pretty good players drafted in the 2020 draft that could potentially help the Seahawks. There's LJ Collier that wants to really prove himself. So there are possibilities that the pass rush can get better and I mean there's really almost nowhere to go except for up for the Seahawks when it comes to pass rush because they were tied for second worst in the league but I would hope that we can at least get 30 sacks this season maybe even into the 40s who knows really it, we just have to see how it ends up playing I think our secondary is definitely a big strong point for the defense but that's going to do it for this video I just wanted to talk a little bit about the secondary which I believe is definitely going to be the strong suit of the Seahawks moving forward and kind of what each player in the secondary brings to the team and what options the Seahawks have to kind of change up roles that they might not be too comfortable with and really, I think that the pass rush is the biggest problem when it comes to the secondary. I think the secondary will have a hard time playing coverage until the pass rush gets better and more pressure is brought to the quarterback. And I didn't mention it earlier in the video, but when it comes to safety, there are not too many options in free agency. So if the Seahawks did want to make a change to that safety position, getting rid of Bradley McDougal, and they didn't actually want to go to Marquise Blair, they would have to probably make a trade or wait until the draft next season. But with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Once again, thank you to everyone for all the support. And subscribe if you're new. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment what you think of the Seahawks secondary. I think it's definitely a very interesting mesh of players. But what do you think? Leave in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the secondary. Any topics you want me to talk about, leave in the comments as well. I will respond to every comment that I can. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a great day.